for the direct shear bulk test data analysis. So this is the shear bulk test schematic diagram. You can see here that how the schematic diagrams of the shear bulk test and this is the preparations, for example, of sand specimen. So we have the uh, porous plate here and we have the two uh, box um, mold for the sand specimen. And then this is how we pour the sand specimen into the box, okay, with the specific size of the uh, shear box. And then we need to uh, temp temping the sand inside the box to make sure it's at the same level okay, for the top surface and then we need to put the pressure plate to cover the specimen and now the specimen is ready to proceed to the loading process so we attach the specimen just now inside the uh, equipment in, inside this equipment that have the dial gauge to uh, record the displacement horizontal displacement and as you can see here at the bottom part here the load will be attached uh, to this uh, part until the sample fail so this is the loading frame to apply the vertical load and also the dial gauge to measure the vertical displacement and this dial gauge to measure the horizontal displacement that the proving ring will measure the shear force okay so this is an example uh, for the data taken from the direct shear test on dry and sandy soil and the size of the specimen was 50 times 50 mm times 20 mm all right so this is actually the size of the shear box as you can see here with the width and also the length of the specimen is 50 times 50 mm and 20 mm is the thickness of the box and the test results were given in the table All right so the normal force and also the shear force the normal force and also the shear force are the result recorded from the shear box test there are four samples uh, have been run to get this data as you can see here that what we need is the normal stress so we need to get the normal stress from the normal force and also we need to get the shear stress from the shear force so the normal force here in the unit newton we can need to, need to convert to become stress so in order to get the stress you have the force divided by area so for the normal stress the normal force here it will divide by the area of the specimen and then uh, as you can see here that the force in the unit newton so we want it in the unit kilonewton uh, for the normal stress because for the normal stress we have the kilonewton per meter square so to get the kilonewton we need to times with the exponent negative 3 and for the area okay for the area we only take 50 times 50 we ignore the thickness because to get the area that is the area 50 times 50 and then it's time by exponent negative 6 to convert the unit from mm square here to meter square. So you will get the 36 for normal force 90. And then for the shear force, same goes to the shear. To get the stress, the shear force need to divide by the area. Again, we need to convert the unit to become kilonewton and also to become meter square. So for the 50, 54 uh, shear force you will have the 21.6 shear stress so complete for all the normal stress here and also for all the shear stress here and then we will proceed to the next step so then we need to plot the normal stress and the shear stress so on the graph paper okay make sure you have the graph paper to plot and then uh, I advise you to make your uh, your graph paper uh, in horizontal so it's more easier because we will have the value of normal stress is a uh, larger value. So make sure that you uh, landscape or horizontal your graph paper. So now let's plot. What you need to plot is the normal stress here with the shear stress here. So make sure that your graph on the x-axis you have the normal stress here. So this is the 
uh, shear bulk test in the drain condition. So you will have the uh, effective stress analysis. So you will have the prime. Okay, C, uh, sigma prime and tau prime. Why? Because at the end of this experiment, actually, you will have the U will equal to zero. What is U? U is the bulk water pressure. Okay. All right, because this is the dry specimen, dry soils, and then the drain condition. So, U will equal to zero. Okay, so that's why for the effective stress, knowing the effective stress will equal to total stress minus with the U. So, U is the pore water pressure. This is the total stress. And this is the effective. So once you have u equal to zero, what you have at the end is effective stress will equal to the total stress as you can see here. Okay, and same goes to the tau or the shear force. This is the tau prime. Okay, so now we need to plot. So we need to plot, for example, we have 36 and 21.6. So this is the first point. So, 36 is uh, around here and 21.6 is around here. So, you need to plot all the data. You need to plot all the data. Okay, for the test number 2, number 3 and number 4. Okay, then what you need to do is to draw the failure envelope. Okay, the straight line that connect all the points or this is the best fit line. So, we call it as a failure envelope. So, you need to draw the failure envelope and then make sure that you draw the failure envelope minimum at C equal to zero. You cannot have the C is uh, to become negative. You cannot have to get the line like this. If you can see here that you will have the intersection of C at negative point. Alright, so C, C is the intersection. C is the cohesion, okay. C here is the cohesion. One of the shear strength parameter that we need to identify is the cohesion. So from this graph, C is the interception between the failure envelope, okay, the intersection between the failure envelope with the y-axis, which is the shear stress uh, line. Okay, that intersection will give you the C value. So for this case, it's around 0 to 0 0.5, I think, okay. I'm um, not really one, but uh, maybe it's around 0 to 0 0.5. All right, so C minimum at 0. You cannot have the C negative. All right, so once you have the C, and make sure that C will have the unit. Okay, so C will have the unit because it is intercept at Y axis that the unit is kilonewton per meter square. So C will have the unit as you can see here. Alright, so this is the wrong value. Okay, so C, C will have the unit. And then another another shear strength parameter that you need to identify is the angle of friction. So how to get to, to get this angle of friction? So simply by using your protector, put it on this line. Okay, and then you measure the line. You measure the angle here. So, you will get around 31 degrees. So, the unit is in degree. So, make sure you have the symbols of degree. So, this is, this is the angle of friction. Okay, actually, this value will same at any point and any part. Okay, let's say you will want to measure it here. So, it will have the same value also, which is 31 degree. Or you want to make it here. So, it also has the same value here, which is also 31 degree. Alright, so that is the angle of so now you already identify the C is 1 kN per meter square and the angle of friction is 31. And make sure that when you plot, your Y axis and X axis should be similar. Alright, so as you can see here, since I have the, the, uh, the smallest value is 36 and the largest value is 180 for the normal stress so I make it in scale of 20, 40, 60 
and same goes to the shear stress so make sure we'll use the same scale and the same gap for example here the gap is around 2 cm between one number to another number so same goes to all but CX and Y also have the 2 cm gap and another 2 cm gap so make sure that the scale for X and Y should be similar all right so that's how we get the shear strength parameter from the shear box test thank you